I am Kalu Osiri and the founder of Osiri University. Hey, it's Kellen, and today I have Kalu Osiri from Osiri University. Hey, this is a university that you cannot say no on. You got to get your PhD in African, not just the history, but what the future is going to be, because he's showing everything from startup incubators and really giving that game all the way from Nebraska today. How are you doing, brother? I am fantabulous. It's so great to be here with you, Kellen. That is awesome. And I'm just going to let the audience know this is our first time talking. And this is like a get to know session, because I think you're going to see this brother on various channels bigger than mine. And so I, I want to get the game. Tell us, what is this university about? What sparked this? Well, Osiri University is the first and only African university from my recollection in modern history. What do I mean by that? Well, there are many universities in Africa, but I'm yet to find a university that, that's an African university, meaning one that is organized based on African principles, one that teaches indigenous African knowledge, and one that espouses African values such as Ubuntu. So that is what this university is, it's all about. Now, as you can already know, Africa needs a lot of help. The reason I say this is because there are many resources in Africa, but we are not developing the talent in Africa to manage those resources. For example, my parents are from Nigeria. I'm Nigerian. Nigeria is one of the most oil rich countries in the world. Don't you think that Nigerians should be producing the best oil engineers, petroleum engineers in the world? Shouldn't the whole world be coming to Nigeria to learn how to drill and produce oil? Let's go to South Africa where they mine gold and diamond and precious minerals. Shouldn't they have the best diamond cutters and engineers there in South Africa? the best gold miners in South Africa. So, so that is what we are doing. We are offering relevant education through decolonized courses. So you gain the skill set. that's important. You learn your chemistry, your physics, your business, all those core things you need to learn. But then you also learn African values. You get to know who you are. That's what really we're all about. Man, tell me, tell me, why do you think that isn't? Because we've had enough folks who've come over to the States and got PhDs that, you know, from Nigerians. Are they not studying it? Or are they not allowed to come back and use their knowledge um, back home? You see, the problem is very complex. I have to say that. Personally, I have to say that I don't have anything against with people coming to the U.S. to get their PhDs. I I'm a beneficiary of that. And I'm so glad I came here. My first step here in this country was at Grambling State University. Go Wait, HBCU. Stop, stop the press, because that was in 2005, and I did my research on you. And do you know that you are talking to a Grambling man? My wife went to Grambling as well. We really? were there that same time, you know, where Grambling, where everybody is somebody with the fee sheet. I call Grambling the Harvard of the South. And I also know you got a degree from Harvard as well. So, yes, uh, you're talking to Grambling right here from Pinchback, the old Pinchback. I never stayed on campus. But I knew Pinchback, but I knew Wheatley even better. You dig. And Bethune Cookman and all that. <laughs> you just made my day, my brother. You just, I am excited to really meet you. I can't believe we are just now meeting. And this is an amazing connection we are having here, Kellen. This, this is so amazing. Yes, and I'm so proud I got my education from Grambling State. I was well prepared, went on to LSU for my PhD. But what I'm saying is people come here from Africa to get their PhDs and to uh, and to advance their education because what we have in Africa, let's, I'm just being frank with you, is not unique. We are still copying and pasting it in Africa. 
So, so because we are, we are always trying to copy what's done in the US, what's done in Europe, it doesn't paste quite correctly when it lands in Africa. That's number one. Number two, what was left behind after post-independence, post-colonialism, you know, was not designed to uplift Africa. The curriculum that we inherited from colonial masters and countries wasn't designed for Africans, right? So, so you can imagine now that the educational system in Africa is really a westernized education. It's not African education. It is, it's not designed to help and empower African people, you see? So that is why it's not working. So I don't blame folks who said, let me actually come here and get the real deal, right? I'm gonna as well come here and get a, a, an education from the West if I'm gonna get a Western education, right? But you know what's, what's gonna happen? I think if African universities can take a hard look at their curriculum and look at the educational sex, sector, if African leaders can encourage the educational sector to indigen, indigenize the educational sector and bring in, infuse African knowledge and make it unique. I think not only would Africans love to learn from Africa, the whole world would also want to come and learn what Africa has to offer. Let me quickly add this. I know you have a lot of questions. Did you get, we, we are in the era of pandemic, right? We're talking about COVID-19 and we are eagerly waiting for the company that would develop the best vaccination, right? Mm -hmm. If I told you that the idea of vaccination was developed in West Africa, would you believe that? Did you know that? Did we know that? I'm talking mm -hmm. about immunization, the concept of immunization. Now, yes, of course, the credit now goes to the Johnson & Johnson brothers, right? That owns this mega uh, pharmaceutical company, giant, right? But that idea was a story that was told by an African slave yep. in Boston who shared a story to his master, a, a, a priest, a, a minister. During the, uh, during the smallpox outbreak, it was, there was a pandemic back then in the 1720s. And he shared a story of how in West Africa, how they used to take the fluid specimen of someone who was sick and injected or inoc to inoculate people who are healthy so that they're immunized from getting that sickness. 30 years later, that same story was then narrated uh, uh, to the Justin and Justin brothers. That was how they took the idea and developed vaccination in America. I share the story to say, we need to go back and look at how we did these things. We did it. We developed this concept. I mean, it was science. Of course, it had to be science, but we don't know the mechanism by which we did it. So, a lot of so if, if Africans could focus on these types of research, we understand the indigenous knowledge, but also we cannot shy away from what's happening currently. Technology has moved far ahead. People are going to uh, to to space. We need to also be playing a role there, right? And we had in the past too. So, what I'm saying is, we need to look back. To, to move forward strongly into the future. You know what? I'm hearing everything that you're saying, but I, I and I'm not editing any of this out. Your name in Grambling was John. This is John O'Series, <laughs> the president of Grambling State. When we went there, John, we knew each other, brother. We we okay because you know Kenneth Fomanke, and I married his sister. Bertina. Really. Yes. And, and if I say and don't don't react, don't hang up. If I say Miss Francis, don't hang up. But you and I, we we, we knew each other at, at Graham Blake. I just you had the beard. I got the locks. And then you, you know, you flipped the first name. So this is John Osiris. This man was brilliant in Grambling. So, yeah. Oh, I see you now, bro. Oh, my goodness. Is, oh, my goodness. I see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, you, I think you are darker now too, though. Oh, because I'm over the shade and it's getting Maybe dark. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I've been in Africa a little bit too, so that 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 sun kissed me special. <laughs> you know, the moment you said from Menke from Cameroon Island, man, I made the connection. Yes, okay. I remember. Okay, Miss Francis didn't give it away. <laughs> 
my goodness. Oh, this is yeah. wonderful. This, this is, is yeah, wonderful. this is. So th that this is how when you're doing your purpose, this is how things all come full circle. So, you know, um, th this is a beautiful thing. Now, when people hear university, if I, if I can say John, because, you know, that's just that's what we used to salute when you were the first African president of Grambling State sh did, you know, how much? That's what they want to know. Even in Spanish, they're saying, Quanto cuesta? Kellen, ask the question, you know, how much is this university and are there traditional degrees, certificates? How does it go? Yes, that's a good question. So right now, the courses have been designed to be very flexible and affordable. So we know a lot of our folks are working, so they need a break, they need the time and the space to be able to enroll in courses. So, so if you are working, you could definitely enroll and learn at your own pace. And the, and the price tag for each course is $100, oh, right? Nice. However, and, and that's very affordable, right? However, what we have going on right now as I speak to you is we have what do I call it? We have um, a limited of time offer, so, so to speak, because we want people to come and see what we are about. What we are saying is, come and take courses right now at no cost. We don't want the money to be an issue for you right now. Come and take the courses at no cost. Obviously, if you want to get the certificate, then you will have to pay $100 and take the exam or the assessments to get it. But if you just want to learn, and we encourage that, just come and learn and see what we are about. And you don't have to pay anything, just enroll and keep going. So that is uh, the answer to that. So it's, it's $100 per course. And you need to take about four to five courses to earn a certificate. So we have a certificate in entrepreneurship, you know, certificate in, in research methods, for example, uh, certificates in, in script writing. We have certificates in different areas, right? So about four to five courses to earn one certificate. You ask about if we are offering traditional degrees. At this point, we are not yet offering traditional degrees. We offer what we call mastery level. And the reason is because we are still on the on our path to getting accreditation from African, um, you know, from, from African ministries of education. So we are working on that uh, in Sierra Leone and in Tanzania. And we're also looking at uh, other places such as, such as Ivory Coast. But those are the three places that we are currently looking at to get our accreditation. So when we invite folks to come and start learning, don't let that um, uh, deter you from coming to learn. Most important thing is to put that knowledge in your head while we work on getting accreditation so that we can offer the traditional bachelor's degree and, and master's and the PhD and so on. And you guys, I tell you again, you're getting this game from somebody who excelled in education. He's put some, it, this is beautiful. The layout is beautiful. And I know that um, I'm going to share this, not just to my influencers, to folks who also are doing things in Nigeria. I don't know if you've read the book, How to Make Money in Africa by John Paul and Dr. Hartnett, but you know, we definitely all got to know each other because what you're doing and what everybody is doing, folks need to come through this funnel because there are a lot of people who later on are going to try to scam. It's probably going to be, you know, foreigners who aren't even black in any way. You know, I don't want to, say a country, but I'm thinking of a country that says, we'll teach you all about Africa. You haven't been here in 20 years. Now with this knowledge that you are putting and you have an incubator, do you have a way for people if they want to invest right now, like my mall of Africa.Africa that I was telling you about, can they do that now through your incubator or use your connections as a consultant to get a business in Nigeria? Absolutely. So what we have, okay. So the incubator that you're referring to uh, is designed to let allow people who have ideas to nurture that idea and crystallize it so that they can they can make it uh, prof profitable, right? So that they can be able to create a business model from the idea. And we have two fantastic brothers, um, Kevin Valentine, who lives in the New York, New, New Jersey area, is. It's a, it's a, a very uh, astute uh, private investor. Uh, he actually went to Morehouse. Um, I, I didn't find someone from Grambling to do this yet, but hopefully I, you know, I just met you now again, right? So hopefully you can 
join uh, that, that club. But, uh, but he, he has experience um, in private investment in, in raising money uh, for, for businesses. So if you have an idea, come. Uh, the other uh, gentleman uh, is Lorenzo Ball. He also is a, a Morehouse grad. He's also a very excellent, uh, astute entrepreneur. He lives here in, in Nebraska. He's the vice president of uh, Ameritas, which is, an, which is an insurance company. And they are responsible for vetting the companies as they come in. So if you have an idea, whether it's um, just at, at an idea stage or a startup or a full-fledged business that wants to expand, you want, what you want to do, the first step is to register. You go to osiriuniversity.org and click on Startup Incubator and fill out the form. You'll be invited to make a pitch. Uh, you make a pitch at a platform called Lions Roar. So once you make that pitch, they would look at your pitch, look at all your submissions, and then invite you to incubate you. The reason why they are doing that selection right now is because there's just two of them, and they need to be able to they, you know, wrap their arms around just a few um, startups, right, that they can really support, raise money for, nurture them, and make sure that they go from, from ideation all the way to launch, you know, if that's, if that's um, their situation. So that is what we have right now. Now, as, as they get more comfortable, they plan to grow that, their team so they can have more people, uh, more startups in the incubator uh, 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 platform. So that is what we, uh, we have going Man, you got you got it. I don't want to give the folks any more information because I want them to go to Osiri University. I'm so happy when I say that Osiri University. That 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 is um that's a it's a beautiful thing. What is a community give back? I mean, this whole thing with Osiri University is a give back. But what's a give back maybe additional that you're doing or that you plan on doing in the future? Oh, we are doing a lot. So, so sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes what we do is we encourage our malamai, that's what we call our instructors, to mentor our students beyond the curriculum. So if students are thinking about, um, you know, how to position, position them themselves for a job or for maybe a business they, they want to start, uh, Malamai, our instructors, uh, do a good job at mentoring them. So that is a way we, we we are giving back. Now, also keep keep in mind, we have instructors who are African Americans from the Caribbean, from the continent. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing we have on there. It's it's a it's a really it's a big family and it's growing. In fact, uh, the other day we 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 got, we got an email from a lady from India that wants to join the the, the, the team. And she, she's been vast in the area of indigenous knowledge in India. So but we have a beautiful thing going at this point. So that's one way that we are giving back. On Saturdays also, we invite uh, speakers. So for example, this coming Saturday, you're gonna have uh, Professor Langmere Kebuma. Professor Langmere Kebuma is at Howard University and he is the chair of the communications uh, department there. He's gonna come on on a panel with another fantastic lady uh, that you may have heard of. Her name is Malens Bart Williams. So Malens actually has the, uh, the, her TED Talk is called the boldest TED Talk because in her TED Talk, uh, he talked to, she talked about how um, Europe has really devastated Africa and taken from Africa. And, and uh, it was called the boldest TED Talk. I encourage people to go uh, look for Malens, Bart Williams, TED Talk and watch it. Anyway, two of them are coming on the, on the platform. On this Saturday, um, it's gonna be at 9 a.m. Eastern, and just for one hour. They will, and they will share advancing Africa on its own terms. How do Africa, how can Africa, how should Africa advance itself on her own terms? That is what they're going to be discussing. It's going to be really electrifying. Um, so we do that. It's a way of giving back too. So we do that every um, every Saturday, just where you know our leaders come together and we sort of chat like this. Something is that we're also doing. We raise money for scholarships. You know, I mentioned to you um, 
that uh, tuition is $100 per course. So those who cannot pay, but they want the certificate, uh, they are going to maybe want scholarships. Um, our, what our, our friend, Professor Langmia Kebuma, raised some money for, uh, for us recently, and we are using that money to support some girls in Northern Nigeria. Um, some, uh, some girls who are endangered, vulnerable girls. And I, I, as, I, as I think about those girls, I am touched actually by what's, by their environment. But those girls are going to be enrolled at Osiri U U University this term starting in March. They will start taking uh, courses thanks to Professor uh, Langmeer Kebuma who helped raise that money. So those are ways we are giving back to our people. You know, and of course, by offering the courses right now at no cost as well is also a way to give back. We just want our folks to come and learn. You know, we talk about economic empowerment, we talk about political empowerment, all kinds of empowerment. I believe that all these kinds of empowerment rests on education. I mean, you have to be educated to know how to invest in the first place. You have to be educated to understand politics and government, right? So we need to constantly be in a conversation that allows us to learn. Man, you guys, I got to take the rest of this conversation off air because the things that I want to say, and let me just say, this is the most dressed down that I have seen this man, because usually you would see him in Grambling full suit, like every president, right? But he does, he's representing Africa, he's in the cold right now, so you know, he has the scarf um, and it's beautiful, but I want you guys to look in the description box, you will see OsiriUniversity.org there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. You will find him on other channels, but we thank that you listened, especially you, who, the majority who listen on Apple Podcast. But for those of you even who watch and you know, the YouTube numbers are what they are, but we're giving the game. You can't be broke if you watch this show. Thank you for coming on, brother. Thank you so much, Barack Helling. I am so glad to be reconnected with you like this. This is so beautiful.